Um, so it's about a, a, a forest, rainforest, and they're gonna cut down the rainforest. Okay. And one of the workers gets shrunk down, and there's fairies that live in there, and there's like this this bat, like the a whole bat down there. Yeah. Okay. And it's a cartoon. Back in the nineties. Yeah, probably early nineties. Okay. Like, Burn gully. Yeah. Let me. I feel like I've heard of this now that you've talked about okay. the fairies. Okay. So, Burn Gully, they're making it into a live action. Oh, 92. 92. Yeah. So I was right, early 90s. We moved up here in 92. Yeah. Oh my God. So they're making a live one. Okay. And I'm so fucking excited. And we should, because Katie's excited too, because she watched it as a Okay, kid. so then we'll all watch it. We need you to watch it. Yeah. And realize that it is hokey and like, but you would probably love it. I'm sure. I would say you get high, watch it before you, like get high before you watch it. Okay. Where, where can I watch it? Uh, I don't know. Guess what, guys? We're not doctors. No, we are not. If you're going to be making any major medical decisions, please consult your doctor. Yes, and that includes diets, exercise, medications, and surgery. We love you guys. And we want you to be in our OSLP family forever. So be careful and consult your, your doctors. doctors. Have you heard of ProCare or just have you been living under a rock? ProCare is the very first bariatric multivitamin to develop a one-a-day vitamin. That's right. You heard it correctly. One-a-day. One a day. And they also have delicious dark chocolate calciums that are available during the winter months. That's right. So go to ProCareNow.com, get your calcium chews, get your multivitamin, and use OSLP for a discount. Are you feeling a little sluggish? A little lack of protein? A little lack of caffeine? Well, we got the fix for that. That's right. Dive Bar Nutrition has the best protein bars. They have caffeine, protein, and they taste delicious. So head on over to divebarnutrition.com and use code OSLP at checkout. Are you located in the Florida area? Well, we have the perfect office for you. Dr. Fridley and his wife, Macy, have created the perfect, welcoming, and safe place for your bariatric journey. That's right. So click on the link below to start your weight loss journey now. And... Don't forget to tell them that the OSLP's girls sent you. Welcome back, OSLP family. Yeah. Welcome, welcome. You are listening to our Sleeve Life podcast. And this is Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> this is Mel. Okay, so you I forgot about I know I've been without my ADHD medication, and so my brain and my memories just aren't the same. Like <laughs> I know I have done this for four years. Yes. Four We're years, I have done four that. years, man. Yeah, crazy. It is crazy, mm -hmm. but uh, we want to remind you guys all to check out our website. It's yes. OurSleeveLifePodcast.com. There are so many goodies on there. Things are changing all the time. Yes. So we you have stay updated. You have to stay updated. And the first thing you need to do when you go onto our website is sign up for the newsletter because when we do things like special JBY announcements, when we announce that we go on tour, mm -hmm. when we, but pretty much whatever we do. You are going to be the first, first one to know. Yeah. They, yeah. they get the newsletter. Our patrons get the news stuff first. So you guys have to go to our website. Yeah. And speaking of the patrons, mm -hmm. at the top right corner of the website, there is a button. It says become a patron. Now, there are so many reasons to become a patron, but I'm going to let Mel tell you. <laughs> there is because we have a we have our own Facebook group. We do. Which is amazing. It's almost up to 300 people. It's called the Benchies. And there is a range between like almost like 24 all up into the 60s. We have men and women in there. So I mm -hmm. what I love is that there's an experience on every level mm -hmm. and everybody helps each other. That's yes. the whole point. Um, Because we we celebrate their victories and we help them when they're struggling. Yep. I, I like that you said experience mm -hmm. because that's what it is. Like it is. it's an experience when you go in. And you get to meet these people. And some of them might be local to you. Yeah. We actually have helped people find each other that were really close by. That, that didn't really realize that they were. Yeah. It's pretty cool. And so, and people go, like, when they visit other states, mm -hmm. they they post in the benches and say, hey, I'm going to be in this state. Anybody around? So it's a great place to meet people and stay present in your journey. And then if you have any questions, you get to ask all those questions that you have been burning well, to ask. And benches get their own merch. 
They do. <laughs> they so do. a bunch of them got a, a, all their stickers. Yes, uh, that was crazy. I loved seeing those. Yes. They're so much fun. So there's a lot of cool things that come with it. Uh-huh. And we even get to talk to them once a month. Yep. And we're going to start putting some expert calls in there too. Just sprinkle it in. Yes. So that way you guys get, uh, you know, a lots of value for mm-hmm. helping us. So mm-hmm. um, and also we want you to wear our merch. Yeah, like our binges wear our merch like crazy. They we, do. And we love them. For they it. do. But yeah, like they get a discount code. So, you know, it's really worth becoming one. They get a discount code. They also, if you are in the ten dollars or higher, you get a discount code for our pillar tracker. Now, the that is in the digital download section of the website, mm-hmm. and the pillar tracker is a year long tracker where you can track every week. And say, okay, I hit my protein here. Mm-hmm. I hit my sleep here, but I didn't hit my movement. You can see what needs to be changed. And Mel's favorite part is the mood tracker part. Yeah, because they literally there's a section for it. And yeah. I love that because like we need to pair those and see mm-hmm. what's going on. Like if I'm having a down day, is that why I didn't move? Yep. You know, or like if I had a good day, is it because I hit all my markers? Mm-hmm. Like you, you can figure out your rhythm. So that's mm-hmm. my favorite part. And the journal prompts that come in your newsletter. They do every week, and, every Wednesday. Yep. And then you get them, you can fill them out on the pillow, the pillar tracker. On the pillar tracker. So you actually get one page that's the tracker and one page that's the, that's the journal, journal page. So that you can take, mm-hmm. then go in there and you can track. And a lot of the journal prompts have to do with the episodes that we drop. Yeah. Actually, it has everything it has to do everything with the episodes. With it. So they're all centered around what we're talking about on the podcast. So we want to bring everything in this nice little bubble almost. Mm-hmm. You have your support group. You have your tracker. You have your journal prompts. You have expert calls. You have calls with just us. And then you have your community wrapped in there also. It's so so good. Yeah. We're just trying to give you everything that you could need to be a, a successful bariatric patient mm-hmm. or a successful person in general. Oh yeah. Cause these will help you yeah, this, in regular life yeah. with your coworkers and family and friends. Mm-hmm. Like this is not just for bariatric. Yes. This is for your whole life. It so. started as just bariatrics, but now it's kind of going into just any part of it's, anybody's it's life. Yeah. So yeah. I like it. And I know Mel's looking at me because my, my video is still going and she already shut hers off. I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's okay. But okay. Guys, we know that times are rough. Mm-hmm. So if you cannot support us in that way and you want to support us, you all you have to do for free is go over to YouTube. It's already on your freaking phone. So type in our sleep life podcast, hit the bell and the subscribe button. Mm-hmm. And then you get literally videos of us every single Tuesday. Some are with guests. Yep. And some are like today exactly. where it's just us. Just us. And we, we love, love these episodes. And I say we say it every <laughs> single time we do one of these. Um, but I really do like it because it's uh, not about communicating with somebody else. It's right. about like just talking about us. Is it talking about our experiences? And, and this is where we started. It was just exactly us. how we started. It was just yeah. us for the first season and a half. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Season and a half was just us. And it's funny that we we didn't even think about guests at that point we were just like we're just gonna talk mm-hmm. yeah we're like well because there's so much to talk about with our stuff and then mm-hmm. we realized oh there's a lot to talk about we yeah with guests with and- yeah with experts mm-hmm. and yeah with everybody and else other people's stories mm-hmm. like exactly so there's a lot of value yes here. so today I'm kind of excited to talk about this because I don't think we've I think we've touched on it throughout, like throughout. It's sprinkled through our show. Yeah. But we've never dedicated an episode to this. But we're going to talk about the things that we did prior to having surgery that did not, it actually caused us to gain weight. Yeah. Yep. And we didn't even know it at, in that point mm-hmm. that that's what it was. Oh, because I didn't know I had emotional eating until after surgery. So there's a lot. There's a lot to unpack. Yes. So... Let's start with emotional eating. Okay. I mean, or coping with food. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't know that I coped with food. I had no idea. Like, I just thought food was there because it had to be. Yeah. And why shouldn't you be happy while you're eating food? Yeah. But you don't realize that not only are you eating it when you're happy, but you're eating it when you're sad, frustrated, angry, 
all of the emotions. Yeah, I didn't realize I was going to the fridge. Lonely. Like for those reasons. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like just finding myself in random parts of the house where there's food. Yeah. Why I'm just feeling different feelings. Yeah. I think the first time that it really hit me was right after my ex-husband left. Okay. Because I didn't realize how lonely I was. Mm. And I didn't even, it didn't even spark it. I think we were, we were talking to someone on the podcast and they had said lonely and it never even sparked into my brain that that that's what I was doing. Cause I was getting up. That's where all my sleeping, like frustration started. Yep. Was right after my ex-husband left. I was lonely. I was used to having another person. Mm -hmm. I didn't have them anymore. And so I was getting up and just finding anything I could eat. Yeah. Anything. It's crazy because like I didn't even think about that. I had all this like we had all this random shit in our pantry. What you what you got going on over there, ma'am? I think it's a little late. That's what she said. I don't say that enough no, anymore. I don't. It's kind of kind of crazy. need to get back on that. Yeah, that, can you can you get back on that? Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll work on that for yeah. you. Okay. Um, because we we would have all this random shit. Like, I don't like pretzels, right? But there would be pretzels in there, or there would be popcorn. I don't like popcorn. It talks back to you. I don't like it. I don't like how when I burp later, it tastes like burnt popcorn. I don't experience that. I do. Do you guys experience? Do that? Do you experience that? Because are it you does. feeling me on the whole food talking back to you? I know that's a big one for you. It's a big one. I don't want it to make noise when I eat it. Like, I feel like almost like it's screaming. I how? Okay, so like, okay, so popcorn, it squeaks when you eat it, right? So when you're eating it, it's squeaking, right? So it's basically screaming at you. Please don't eat me. You're killing me no, right now. Don't eat me. No. <laughs> no. Every time you crunch down, that's what it's saying. No, it's actually excited. No. No, it is. No, it's it like, is not an excited it squeaks, squeak. And then it like crumbles and it's all happy that it's going down into no. your tummy. You remember like, okay, when somebody like punches you in the stomach, right? You go, Ugh, right? Yeah. That's basically their squeak. So oh, every my- time you crunch down, that's what you're doing. Well, you're hearing... The squeak. I'm hearing the happiness. That's it's. You're it a is psychopath. Fu- no, it's fulfilling its purpose. No, you're a psychopath. No, remember, like, it's not from Toy Story. Like, they have to fulfill their purpose, and like with food, you like it's fulfilling it. It was uh, made no. for us to consume and us to touch. How do we know? How do we not know? How do we? How have you ever talked to a popcorn? No, but how do you know it's screaming? Because it squeaks. But that's it could be a good squeak. Nope, it's not a good squeak. It fills me with dread. I She's don't like me. it. Same with green beans. What do you have against green beans? They squeak when you eat them. No, they don't. Yes, they do. Okay. When I just you had green beans, they squeak. They make noise I when you eat them. I don't think they squeak. Squeaky There's, cheese. The, the squeaky cheese is real. That is loud. Yeah, and it's screaming at you. That one, I think it is too. Yeah, it's saying, because do not eat me. The level between the popcorn and the squeaky cheese, it's like 10 times fold. Like yeah, there's a huge fucking squeak with like squeaky it. cheese. Yeah. I don't like the squeaky cheese either. Not going to lie. I don't like that it, it talks back. I think it's too loud and I don't like the um, texture on it. Not a fan. It's like, it's t- it, it literally is like prying your mouth back apart. It does not want to be eaten. No, it's like popping. It's like, ah. Yeah, I don't like this. it. I don't like it. And mm. green beans do squeak when you eat them. Like uncooked or cooked? Both. I just had green beans from Aunt Nini. Are they overcooked, they cooked, though? I'm sure they were because if it they... took me longer to go get them. They weren't fresh. Okay, anymore. so if they're overcooked, they do not squeak. They're dead. They, okay. You have murdered them completely. You murdered the green beans. Yes. So, But if you squeak. get them when they have a slight snap to them. Mm-hmm. They are yelling at you. For so you won't them. eat snap peas either. Because those a, actually make a snap. Yeah, but the snap is different than the squeak. Okay, so it's only squeakiness. It's like the squeaky talking back okay, to you. Okay, it's not the I snaps. don't like. You it's like, not the snap. You like snaps, not squeaks. Yeah, because like it. I like snap peas. They're delicious. I like carrots. They snap. Like fresh carrots, mm-hmm. but they don't squeak when you eat them. They crunch. They snap. Yeah, they snap. So it's the squeaking... They're yelling at you, telling you, 
Do not eat me. I don't like it. You know what? I think that's fair. Okay. I like I, it. I think it's okay. good. All right. So back to what we're actually talking about. Um, no, the uh, the emotional eating of like, there are things that were in my pantry that I never would have gone to and eaten because I don't like them. Ah. But I was getting up and I was going over there and I was eating them. So I wasn't, I would just overeat the food that I already had. That you liked. That I liked. Okay. I would get massive portions of it. Okay. Yeah. Like fries. Oh, yeah. Rice. rice. Yeah. Um, Pork chops and rice. Ranch. Yeah, and but we still don't count ranch. I don't eat it like I used to, though. Really? At all. Yeah. Oh. I feel like I eat ranch more now. Than you used to? Than I used to, oh, I only because of, like, if food is a little dry, I can't do it. No, so you need. I need the extra moisture. I, like, I love sauces now. Like, yeah. there's, like, a plethora of sauces. Yeah. That are out that I love. I, um, but yeah, I've used less ranch now though. I mean, maybe it's because I like other sauces more. Yeah. Cause ranch was pretty much your only go-to. Yeah. It was ranch or ketchup. Yeah. So, and half the time I don't want ketchup anymore. It's spicy. It's too to me, sweet so. to me. <laughs> it's too sweet for me. Ketchup is spicy. Nope. Sweet to me. I know the look that I get from people when I say that, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like, sure. no, ketchup's spicy to me. And they're like, what? Well, they and they start to do like the oh, and then they're like, wait a minute, no, that doesn't even make sense. No, because there's actual sugar in tomato. I know, uh, I know, ketchup. And it's, I know, it's hilarious. I know, I don't understand it. <laughs> I don't. I just, so yeah, just I would I just am. overeat the items, or I would go get ice cream. Yeah, I was an ice cream lover, but it wasn't the tubs. It's the whole like going to Baskin Robbins. That was your like. It was like a. Uh, Oh, you want to know the trifecta, actually? It's Arby's. Yes. So on my way home, if I was having a bad day. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this didn't happen all the time, but this has happened. Maybe like a handful of times. I left Progressive. Okay. I, I'm off work now. Okay. I'm annoyed uh -huh. of some sorts. Yeah. I go to Sonic. Okay. Okay. I grab my iced tea. Which they don't have Sonic here anymore. No, so. they don't. Yeah. Sad. Mozzarella sticks. Okay, I get a four. From Sonic. From Sonic. Okay, got yeah. it. Yeah. I'm on the same page. Okay, so I would eat that while I drive. Okay. To Arby's. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then I'd order myself, because I already have my tea, I would get my sandwich and my fry. My fry would be a large fry with two ranches. Okay. Not done yet. Now <laughs> we're done at Arby's. We have this all in the car. Okay. Now I go to Baskin Robbins, get two scoops of chocolate chip ice cream. Mm -hmm. And then I go home and I put that in the freezer. And then I, I've ordered my mozzarella sticks are already done because yes. I ate them on the car ride. Yeah. And then now I'm eating the Arby's. And you would drink. And now your, your iced this tea is, is regular iced tea. Yeah. I don't like sweet not tea. Not sweet tea. It's fucking gross. Um, it is fucking gross. And it's just a whole lot of sugar that should not be there. Um, oh, it's wild. So you would get all of this. Yeah. You would eat the mozzarella sticks and then be drinking your iced tea throughout this. Right. Absolutely. So something that we've learned is that as you drink after you or while you're, while you're eating, eating, it's washing things down. Yep. So you're never actually letting the food that you ate like sit. settle and no, not at all. And then you would eat your sandwich. I had fries first. Oh, fries first. Fries first. With two ranches. With two ranches. Then your whole sandwich. I would do, I, I even still do this. I would do half. Okay. Put the other half in the fridge. Okay. What I do now is that I don't have that half till the next day. I would just have that half later on that night. Ah. Uh, Maybe like an hour or two later. Then you would have your ice cream. I would have my ice cream after I had the other half of that sandwich. Yep. That That is a Interesting. not unheard of day for me. Wow. Yeah. So do you think, so you said a handful of times. Do you think it's more than a handful? Um, I wouldn't get. So the part that's not a handful of times uh -huh. is the Sonic mozzarella stick okay. beginning. Okay. I But I would go to Arby's and get my iced tea. I'm an iced tea lover. Yeah. Um, And then I'd go to Baskin Robbins. Got it. And that that happened a lot. A lot, a lot. Okay. Um, right. Only if I could afford it. Because, like, if Dylan and Eric were home, I can't. Like, that's a lot of money at Arby's mm -hmm. every time that I would want it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. So there was some times, yeah, I'm now thinking about it. I've hid eating that. Ate it all before I got home. And then had dinner. I would be like, I'm not really hungry right now. I had a late lunch. But then I would eat later. Okay. 
Yeah. I don't think that's unheard of in our community. I don't think so either. I'm definitely one of the peeps that do that. And I have done that. I've never done the whole like two sodas and all these things. Yeah. I've done the whole like eat till you get to the next one. Well, and eat until you are bursting. Yeah, it would hurt. Yeah. Like I'd be like, oh, I'm full now because everything hurts. Yeah. Like, you basically I feel like that, you're going to roll like they have to roll you out. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. And that like, was every time I would go to um, Olive Garden. Yeah. Because I went I've, to Olive Garden a lot. I've been with you. Yeah. And you love pasta, man. I do. I did. I did. Not so much anymore. Mm-mm. But yeah, I would do um, you would get your drink. And then I would get Alfredo to dip my breadsticks in. So I learned that trick years later. Yeah, it's so good. It's too good. It's too good. With the, fry, with the bread? Yeah, oh. with the breadsticks. Stupid. And then you have your salad, which I never liked the uh, Italian dressing. So I would get it with ranch. Mm-hmm. So there would be two two bowls of salad on yep. the table, right? Um, and I'm saying like even just me and my ex-husband. Oh, yeah. Like Alfredo, breadsticks. And you you had at least two breadsticks. Oh, which they're unlimited. So they just keep bringing up. Well, and you have two in the beginning. You also have more at the end as you're going through your meal. Yep. And this was like never ending possible. Yep. This was like my thing. Yeah. So then you have all of that. You're full. Like, let's be honest. Mm-hmm. You are full. Oh, 100 percent. You're like, like you just consume come up a lot of calories. Yes. In a short amount of time. Of a drink, mm-hmm. breadsticks, yep. Alfredo to dip your breadsticks in. I mean, you you threw in salad. I, I, there was some greenery. Yeah. There was some greenery in there with very fatty ranch. Yeah. Because you know their ranch ain't like. No. I mean, they're not. The, I mean, they're, the ranch is good. It's not the best. It is not. It we ranked them the other day. Yeah. It, it's definitely. It's, it's up there. It's up there. Yeah. Because I think it's like a Parmesan ranch. I think so, too. Which, yeah. And then that's the other part is that w- when you do your salad, they oh do the grating the, of the cheese, the parmesan over the top, yep. and you're you got the layer like this on top. Okay, so you just ate that. You are completely and utterly you're full. You're totally full. But then here comes this big plate of pasta. Yep, and with more parmesan cheese on more top. parmesan cheese, more breadsticks dipped in it. Yep, you know the whole gambit, mm-hmm. and then. You got to finish that bowl because you can't get your second bowl. Yeah. Until you finish that bowl. So then you go on to your second bowl, which granted, they do give you a smaller portion, but it's still, but still it's a lot of pasta. It's a lot. And then you do it again. And half the time I wouldn't get chicken or meatballs or anything. Just it was pasta. just pasta. Damn. So I'm not getting any protein at this point, mm-hmm. except for the little bit of in Parmesan cheese. And the cheese. Okay. So then... When you're done with all of that, you order a third bowl. That's a lot. And then you take that home for later. Oh, okay. Okay. But then you have to add in because they used to have this raspberry chocolate cheesecake. Oh, it's delicious. It's it was they don't have it anymore. Oh, so it's it's a moot point. But yes. then you bring that out and then you got to eat all of that mm-hmm. because you don't want to take it home. <laughs> right. So then you have just consumed all these calories. So by the time you get up from that table, you basically feel like you are being rolled out of there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, you feel just, it's just like a wizard of, no, not wizard. Willy Wonka. Wonka. Willy Wonka. Yep. When the violet turns violet. Yep. It's like, yeah, turns into a blueberry. Mm -hmm. That's, that's exactly how I envisioned it. Yeah. Like I'm just violet. I'm getting rolled out of Olive Garden. It's fine. Totally. And I just remember being so much pain. I bet. Like so much pain. And then, so you have a late dinner, right? Because at that point we're we're younger. And so we go out later. Mm-hmm. And then you go home and you watch a movie and you go to sleep. Yeah, you know, there's no movement. There's no processing Not it. At all. There's nothing. And then you wake up and then you overeat again. And then you have those leftovers. <laughs> and then you have those leftovers for lunch. Yeah. 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 I mean, I get it because like we don't know. What we don't know. Well, and we didn't know a lot. Yeah. Like there's so much that has come out with this podcast and just this this whole journey that we've been on for the last four years. Yeah. Where we have learned what to do and what not to do. And what we were doing before 
It was not good, guys. Well, there was just like a huge disconnect between what we consumed and what we thought it was doing to mm-hmm. our body. We I remember thinking none of it affected me. Mm-hmm. Like I was just like, this is what we eat now. Not realizing like what bread does to you, what like sodas do to you, what energy drinks do to you, like what the chips are really like, is any of it good? You know, mm-hmm. like I wasn't putting two together. It was more about pleasure. It was like, I want this food now. Mm-hmm. It makes me feel good. So I want to eat it. Mm-hmm. And I did not care what it actually did to me as a whole. Mm-hmm. And even as my doctors, they never actually addressed me being obese. They just addressed mm-hmm. of walk Move more, eat, eat, less. Le- eat less. Yep. No one told me I was never referred to a nutritionist or a dietitian through the whole time. I, I was actually, only referred when I wanted bariatric surgery. Oh, yeah. I did it with my bariatric surgery program. No, I mean, like, she yeah. didn't want to send me to the bariatric she surgeon. Went. She wanted to send me to a weight loss clinic. Yeah. No. So no. now that I want to do something about it, now you're going to send me? Right? It's like, why couldn't you, you guys can see it? Mm-hmm. You can see my weight getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Like, you guys have all the information. Mm-hmm. And no one's actually giving me anything to do. Mm-hmm. There's no knowledge. They're not telling me to go read anything, go look up articles, nothing. And it's fucking ridiculous. It's like, because now we have all the knowledge. We have mm-hmm. not all of it, but we have a lot, a lot more a lot, than we had, a lot more than we did four and years ago. How much we, we have actually made better choices because of the knowledge mm-hmm. that we have. So it kind of makes me angry. And it also like makes me, I'm actually going to change my doctor because yeah, he, he is, still hasn't even done that. He just, you know what he did last time? So he was, you know how he does like the exam yeah. and they like touch your tummy, make sure like nothing hurts and yeah. all that stuff. And he's like, why he's touching my, my, my tummy. He's literally saying like, so, um, are you working out? Like, what's your movement like? And he's like, cause we've noticed it's gone up and I'm like, you're touching me while you're saying this. <laughs> like, this feels really weird, but I was like, it's not the best. It's definitely been better. I was honest about it, but yeah, I now that I say it out loud, I'm changing my doctor because he didn't give me any information what to do. He mm-hmm. just said he asked me a question, I answered, and then he left it alone. Nothing. It's fucking wild. I don't understand this. I like either. I don't understand this. Like, what is the point of having a doctor? Yeah. And they obviously notice. That weight is going up or that you're, I don't know, maybe you're in more pain or maybe whatever the it be, right? Yeah. You're in there for a reason. Mm-hmm. They don't actually give you a guide to what to do. No. Like only if there's a big problem. There's a reason why we get so mad at the move more, eat less statement. Yep. Because move more, eat less, that's a that is a statement. Mm-hmm. That is not a question that is not searching for more answers. This is not giving us a, hey, I don't know what to do, but I'm noticing this. And I really think that you need to move more, eat less. Let's do A, B, and C. Yeah. None of that. There's none of that. Mm-mm. Like, that is why I think our country and our our the weight of our country is just at an overall high. It's it's out of control. Because nobody actually wants to talk about, okay, I'm obese or obesity runs in my family and I'm seeing my weight go up. What now? Well, it's just weird. Like, why can't we have that fucking conversation? Because We're- so many people are scared to either have the conversation with their doctor because yes. they're in that position. No, I understand that one. But why is the doctor scared? Because That's it's their an fucking... awkward as fuck conversation. But they'll talk about your prostate and your dick pills and all this shit, but they won't. I... The fucking weight, guys, this yeah. is so dumb. I know. So fucking dumb. But so much of our health issues are tied to weight. A lot of health issues are from just weight. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, diabetes, you've got high cholesterol, mm-hmm. you've got high, high blood, blood pressure. pressure, you've got fatty aches, liver disease, fatty liver disease, which Heart we disease. both had, right? Because mm-hmm. you had one too, right? Or was she, slight? She, it was slight. Slight. It was slight. Um, and then you got to think like 
your ankles and your feet hurt, your knees hurt. Oh, the inflammation your, is through the roof. Yeah, like ev- all of this. Mm-hmm. And then it fucks with your gut. Yep. It fucks with your sleep. It fucks with everything, but nobody's willing to have a conversation to figure out what the fuck to do now, except for people in bariatrics or obesity research. I know. It's fucking wild. You have to actually go out of your primary care, Mm -hmm. which they're your primary care for a reason. Mm -hmm. Primary means main and care obviously means care. So they're (laughs) going to be the ones to tell you what, hey, we're noticing this. Yeah. They're supposed to be almost like our personal scientist. You're going to tell me mm-hmm. what my levels are, what we need to fix, and how we should fix these things. If you don't know how, then you, you will d- send me to the person that correct. does. You will refer me out. It's like yep. a fucking mechanic. Yep. Why? It should not matter. My doctor should not be scared yep. to have this conversation. When I was having issues with my hands, my hands were hurting. They were hurting every every day. I mean, I did, you know, whatever. So it. I went to my primary care. She said, I think you have arthritis. Yeah. I'm going to refer you to a rheumatologist so you can get further testing. Yeah. If you they, don't know. Why can't that be done about obesity? I'm noticing your weight is climbing at a very fast rate. Yeah. I am also noticing you have diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol. You're having pain in your knees, in your in your ankles, yep. in your feet. I'm going to refer you to XYZ. Yeah. Yep. It shouldn't matter. And it frustrates me because what they also don't tell you, what we've learned is all of our stress levels. Yes. Plays a huge, huge part, huge part of weight gain. Mm-hmm. Um, and then weight like stallness, things like not mm-hmm. moving at all is stress. Mm-hmm. Don't teach us how to deal with stress. They don't. We didn't have therapists back then. I, I didn't know how to. I mean, I did, but she fell asleep. That's right. And that's why she became not your therapist. Yeah. Because fuck that. Let's send a 16-year-old girl who is having problems with eating disorders to a therapist that falls asleep while she's talking. That's fucking wild. I would be so angry if I was your mom. She did it like three times in a row. No, thank you. Yeah. I would have like going. I would have poked her. Oh, well, it was like it was like an upstairs room. Yeah. And it was like a couch and then two chairs. She sat in one of the chairs. It was like a distance. I don't my when I went for my dad after he died, it was like that, too. Yeah, I didn't like it. I don't like it. either. It made me feel creepy. I actually much prefer the telehealth. Me, too. Because oh, you're I don't in need your to go own to space. Office. You feel comfortable in your space. You're not in a new area where you're not sure what's going on. Like, mm-hmm. I, I honestly... I say telehealth is where it's at for therapy. Especially like the drive there can fuck with you. Mm -hmm. The drive home. The drive home is going to like be wild Mm -hmm. because your brain can't like it's trying to process what you just fucking said. Well, you know, (laughs) debating on or depending on what you were talking Talking about. about. Yeah. Like it's actually I would say safer to stay home. Probably. Yeah, it probably is. So so that's that's the thing is like stress levels. They never Mm -hmm. taught us anything. So now Mm -hmm. we're eating. What they didn't really teach us trying about to food. cope with food uh, over our stress. Yeah, because they never told us, oh, journal, listen to music, talk to mm-hmm. a friend, go on a walk. Mm-hmm. How about you be active today? Like, go join a group. Mm-hmm. No one, no one said anything. Well, because if you think about it, like we all have support groups when it comes to bariatrics, right? We yeah. have support groups when people pass away, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. We have support groups for pretty much anything. But is there a support group for stress? I don't know. I don't think so. And the ones for weight gain stuff didn't start till probably like 10, 20 years ago. Oh, yeah, for sure. So those are like way late in the game. And you feel like you did something wrong. Oh, when then we're totally ashamed. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's very, very difficult to deal with stress, especially when you aren't giving given any tools Mm -hmm. to deal with it. Yeah. Um, okay. The other thing I wanted to touch on is the reason why we're kind of reminiscing about these things. Oh, yeah, we should probably do that. Is because you can't move forward without, and this is a term from my therapist, you cannot drive a car forward without once in a while looking in the rearview mirror. Yep. And I don't think you can properly be a successful bariatric patient Mm -hmm. without looking back at what you did. Well, yeah, because when you look back, then you can, you know what to, like, they're, they're your own red flags. Yeah. They're literally your own red flags and you want to make sure you're not doing that in the Mm -hmm. future. And yes, some of obesity is a genetic disorder, right? We all battle it. 
um, in different ways. We all present it in different ways. But at the end of the day, if I had been doing the things that I now know how to do, I would have been able to manage it easier. Oh, 100%. So knowing like I need to talk to a therapist because I'm coping with food Mm -hmm. or maybe, you know, I need to be focused on what I'm putting in my system and and not depriving myself. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I did a lot, a lot, a lot in in my 20s. Uh, Yeah, I would restrict and I would do cardio. Okay. Like. Those were two things that I think were all so detrimental to not only my brain in that period of time, but Mm -hmm. also the weight gain in that time. Yeah. Because I was restricting so much and taking so much out of my diet, but I wasn't adding anything in. I wasn't finding new ways to turn it around. Like, you know, all of our cooking lives that we've been doing on Thursdays. Those are all food that I would have gladly eaten. Yeah. And it has such high protein, mm-hmm. but I didn't know those foods existed. No. I didn't know that I could, you know, take out like, say, pasta. Right. Yeah. But then add in, you know, pizza rolls. Homemade well, pizza rolls. Yeah. With, it tastes so good. With Greek yogurt, with the protein. Yeah. And blended like up cottage cheese. cheese. Like, like there's so many things that you could have added. Mm-hmm. Instead of taking away, focus yeah. so focused on no sugar, no carbs, only vegetables, only lean meats, you know, because that's what we were low fat, this mm-hmm. fat free, this. And it's like, no, like what I should have done is just focused on the whole foods. Right. That's a real literally you just go back of like mm-hmm. whole foods. This is what we we ate when like in the 1800s. Yep. Like, come on. Yeah. Like that these are the things that we're supposed to eat. Yeah, just... for sure. And protein is protein. So as long as you're getting that in, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. It doesn't matter like that it's yes, lean meat is better for you. Yeah. But even my fatty meat that I like. Your fatty meat that we both like. Mm-hmm. Like I like fatty meat. I don't like the fat on it, but I like fattier meat. Yes. Um it's still meat. It's still giving me protein. It's still giving you nutrients. You yeah. need fat in your diet. We have learned that from the from the non fat fa- fads that happen. Yeah, you have to have fat in your you diet. You have to have fat in your healthy diet. fats. Mm-hmm. Like I just remember, like I would restrict everything out, and then I would go to the gym, mm-hmm. and I would only do cardio. I would run on the treadmill. I would use the elliptical. I would do the bike. All of those things, but I was never actually doing any weight training. Well, you know, what's funny as you're saying that I didn't do all those things until after surgery. Yeah. No, like restrict and. Oh, really? mm -hmm, And punish myself with workouts and yeah. But that was right after, right? Probably year two. Yep. That makes sense. Yep. That makes total sense. Because I wasn't like, yeah, me and Matt did our workouts and that's where I realized like I'm not moving, like nothing's Mm -hmm. going. Yeah. But me and the way that me and Matt did it, it was never like. It was mainly my alcohol intake, like no yeah. more drinking. Yeah. Um, because that was I was I gained so much weight just from beer. Oh, yeah. It was wild because mm-hmm. I loved beer and I could have a 12 pack <laughs> like it was not unheard of. No. For a night for me to drink a 12 pack. And I mean, so, what was that game we used to play? Which one? Was it with cards? No cards. Fuck crazy the, eights. Crazy eights. Was it crazy eights? There was fuck the dealer. Fuck the dealer. And then, and then I think it was crazy eights. And we used to lay it all out. Oh, it's the pyramid. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Like, But it was like this. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we would just down beers. Down beers. Like, yeah, so much beer. So much beer. And we didn't even realize that beer equals weight. Well, there's so much carbs in it. And that was the thing. Even with health class, we didn't understand what carbs like, we know that it becomes glucose now yeah. and what it does, but we didn't understand that back then. Oh, no. We thought, oh, it's a liquid. It's just going to go right through you. We didn't realize, like, the properties in it were going to actually stick to you. Yeah, I didn't I didn't realize that alcohol would make, make me gain weight. Yeah. Like, I didn't I didn't realize any of that. Mm-mm. I mean, I can remember um, it was actually in that same house with Kathy. And I remember her making those pork chops. Yep. And then the mashed potatoes with the pork. Oh, fat. that was that was a heart attack waiting to happen. Oh, hands down. And we then, called it that then. And the rolls. Yep. And there was no ounce of greenery no anywhere greenery. on that plate. Mm-mm. And I never thought 
that that would make me gain weight. No. It's like, oh, that's what we eat. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I, I feel like we like so dumb. But I know that it's like we're not dumb. It's lack of knowledge. It's lack of knowledge mm-hmm. and people talking about it around us. Mm-hmm. That wasn't me and like my family and your family were trying to survive. Yeah. They weren't caring what what the food was. Mm-hmm. I mean, they they cared enough, but like they didn't know what they were doing. They were just like, here's the food. This is what mm-hmm. we do. Yep. I need to feed these people. We yeah. Yours had four. We had two. And then Michael came way later. Yeah. But like there's always a mouse to feed. Mm-hmm. And when you don't have a lot of money, what do you do? You buy the easiest things and the cheapest and the cheapest things. My mom didn't actually like cook out of a box, but like and your mom didn't either. No. So didn't. it goes to show you can still gain weight and not mm-hmm. be in the in the box section, guys. Yeah. Oh, for sure. So Well, and I think it also plays a part is that I wasn't I didn't grow up obese. No, I didn't. Yes. And so I didn't grow up with that. My Now, my mom is bigger. Yeah. Um, But. I never thought I would be I would be able to gain weight. Like I was just like, oh, yeah, it's Mm -hmm. fine. But when you go out of a family where you can't afford to go out, you can't afford to eat fast food every day. Like that's not in the budget for us into I'm making my own money. Oh, I'm going to go to fast food every day. You got money now. You can do what you want. Yeah. Yep. And that's what I did. And so I that was where that was where my weight gain started. Yeah, was after high school. After high school, had a job. Mo- yeah, moving out, having my own money. I I didn't have a car at that point, so I didn't have any bills on that. Like I, it was literally rent, utilities, phone. That yeah. was it, Food. and beer, <laughs> and beer. We bought a lot of beer. beer. Yeah, we did. <laughs> we bought a lot of beer. <laughs> but I think it's funny that like we didn't even put two and two together back then. No. And it, but we were still like I remember having the conversation of I need to lose this amount of weight. Yeah. I need to lose. I want to get to here. Well, and the only thing I knew was like you would just have to fucking go to the gym. That's what you yeah. have to do to lose weight. It yeah. was no one ever was like, let's change your diet. And like, mm-hmm. what are you actually eating, Melanie? Yeah. Like only person asked me that was Dr. Patterson. Mm-hmm. No one else has, has ever asked me what does your food intake look like? What do yep. you eat on the daily basis? Ellen asked me like, what is the, you know, the journal? And it just sucks mm-hmm. that like we've gone to the doctor prior to surgery mm-hmm. and none of no one else did. Yep. It's interesting. But do you think that if they had asked you to do like a journal thing, you would have actually done it? Yeah. I like homework. You know that. <laughs> You're such a fucking weirdo. <laughs> oh my God. I, I mean, I do, man. That's you do jam. like homework. Yeah. I, I wouldn't have done it. I just wouldn't have gone back. No. Yeah, that's that's totally your MO. Yeah, I just, you know, they gave me work. I'm not doing it. Fuck that. I mean, there's a reason why my therapist has sent me two pages over three weeks ago and I haven't even opened them. You haven't opened them? No. Uh, why? I, I'm not ready to, to open it. Yeah, you can open want, it. I don't want to look at it. It's about processing what I've gone through and I don't want to. Well, the sooner you do that, the sooner you process, the Maybe sooner I you don't have to worry about it. Maybe I don't want to process right now. Oh, no, I've been there. Where I'm like, I don't nope, want to. I don't want to do this. You can't make me. Yep. <laughs> but he can and he will um, because that's David and he knows me at this point and he knows that I talk for 35 minutes about everything else. And then the last 15 minutes, I talk about what I actually really want to talk about. You still do that? Oh, yeah. Hands down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I don't want to talk about what I actually want to You're talk about. Sneak. It's scary. I don't like it. Like, I don't want to know what else is stuck in my brain. No, I get it. I get it because it's scary in there. Yeah. Well, and over the last, you know, year, year and a half, almost two years of therapy, I have pulled a lot of shit out of my brain. Yeah. And I don't want to know what else is in there. Nope. We're good. Hopefully nothing else. And oh, you, you know work, there's more. You, you know forward. there's more. <laughs> you work forward. Motherfucker. <laughs> but yes. So back to the ranch. Yes. Don't eat ranch too much. Yeah. Um, speaking, of. <laughs> speaking of. But basically the easy mistakes that we were making was stress eating, emotionally eating, uh, not going to like not doing anything physical. Mm-hmm. Like we would walk everywhere, but that was it. Well, there that's was... how we kept so much weight off. off. Yeah. And because once... neither of us had a car. Nope. So we walked literally up and down. I'm going my water. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Where is Bouge? Baby right bouge. Here. There we go. Sunny's been here. I'm going to order another one. What? Another Another swig. cup? Yeah. 
There you go. Because I want Harry Potter stickers all over it. Do it. Yeah. This Do is it, my, girl. it's supposed to be my travel one, but I use, use it, it every, every day. day. Yeah. <laughs> um, Anyways, go ahead. But yeah. So we didn't know what to do for movement. We didn't realize we can join things and just be active. Nope. Had no fucking clue. Honestly, like now that we're talking about it, I kind of feel like it was a rich people thing. Like that's what I thought back then. I think so too. Yeah. That's what it was. Oh, oh, the the people that are like wealthier, that's what they, they do. They can afford to eat like that. Yeah. They that's can a- afford to go to the gym. Mm-hmm. Not realizing what prices even were. No. We just assumed. And the fact that we could have just gone outside. Yes. You can just go outside. Like you don't actually need a gym. No. And that's a that's a whole other realization that I think was uh caused me to gain weight is I didn't realize you could do all these things on your own. You can. Like, you can. I mean, yes, we were in the stage of like there were like workout videos. Like it wasn't like we had them on our phone like we do now. No, you had to have like the things are much easier now. Literally, I did Tybo once with my mom. <laughs> Tybo, mm-hmm. that's funny. Yeah, like did the tapes. Yeah, like that was that's all we had. Yeah, so it's just... well, and I think you could rent them at the library. I know you could do it at the Hollywood Video or American Family Video. Yeah, you can rent them there because my mom did. We never went to Blockbuster because it was so far. Up. Oh, that makes sense. Because we, li- you know, we lived in the beginning of this. Yeah. Yeah. And we could walk. I lived a street away from you. Yeah. Yes, and, I know where yes. exactly where And you I could lived. walk to a, a American Family video. Me and Matt did it all the time. Yeah. Like by Mart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. So, yeah. I mean, that's the thing is that we weren't aware and then we weren't active participants in our own life. We were just literally we we're in survival mode so much. Oh, yeah. I hands mean, down. I, I mean, I got pregnant at 18, had Dylan mm-hmm. at 19. Uh, my brain was like. I'm not going to be one of those moms that dump their kid on the their, on the on the parents. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to live at home with my mom and dad yeah. at all. Like, yeah. so what I did was I I did move home a little bit um, like in nine months, literally like Dylan was only three or four months in my belly mm-hmm. and I moved home and then I was out less than a year. Mm-hmm. And I just say it was all of just about saving. It was just about like saving money, mm-hmm. buying the objects that I needed, the furniture mm-hmm. and just hoarding them until I could move out. Yeah. And then getting that deposit and all the things like yep. it was just stressful. And only thing I've ever had is food to comfort me. Mm-hmm. Like that's so I would always go towards food. Well, and that's a very stressful moment. That like, whole just, time. Just frame. what you just described and everything with Eric that was going on in that exact same moment. Yeah. Like, sorry to call it that out, but no, that it has to rough. be. That's a part of it. Mm-hmm. Like you guys weren't together. You no, were, you were uh, going back. and He forth. was actually missing for a while. Yeah, he was missing for like three months. Motherfucker. So like it was chaotic. It was hectic. It was very chaotic. Just trying to sleep and not be like stressed when you wake up was Mm -hmm. like it was a struggle. Well, I did it full time. Yeah. And try to spend time with your friends and try to figure out where the fuck your baby daddy was and dealing with your mom and dealing. I mean, there's there I was forget, so much stress. I forget how much stress I was under. It's yeah, that wild. was a hugely stressful. Those first few years of Dylan was yeah. insane. Yeah. Insane in the membrane. But the mink sense of like I always went to food because it was the only mm-hmm. thing that never left mm-hmm. was always there to make me feel good. Yeah. And now I know like we, I still have that problem. Mm-hmm. So I can't have things in the house. Yep. And I have to work on it daily and I have to have better choices around me. Yep. And that's what we've done. Like we have yep. done a full overhaul. Mm-hmm. I got a standing desk that's about to be put in. Yeah. I mean, me and Kelly built it. Yeah. It's fucking awesome. Um, And yeah, I have a walking pad now so that way mm-hmm. I can actually walk while I'm working. Mm-hmm. And then Katie's making my snackle boxes. So yep. that's what you have to do, guys. You have to surround yourself with the good things. Yeah, I think it's it's easy to just do what's easy. Of course. Right. Yeah. Like it's e- yeah, it's easier to just go through drive through. Yep. You know, you don't want to have to actually cook. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. but when you do those little things and you I, I I I'm honestly back then I did not set myself up for success. No, I didn't either at all mm-hmm. because I blamed everyone else. Mm-hmm. I blamed I didn't blame myself enough. Right. And I think that's why it switched so much after bariatric surgery was I started blaming myself because I I then knew it was my fault. Yeah. Because it's all now it's like in your hands. It's obvious. Yes. I think that back then I 
always, and I, and I've heard it over and over again, right? We make it, we make excuses for it. Like, Mm -hmm. oh, this shirt just went through the dryer. Oh, for it to be tight. This, this brand just runs small. Yeah. Okay. I use that one. Um, oh, I just like standing in the back behind people like there or Mm -hmm. yeah, I just look better when the camera's up high. Yeah. Like there's just all these things that we did and we told ourselves that were fucking lies. Let's be honest. Like they were all fucking lies because we knew, yeah. we knew that we were gaining. We knew what we were doing wasn't working. Right. We continued to ignore the signs. We didn't have help from our health care professionals. Nope. Our, not our parents either. We didn't they have were, help from our parents. They were trying to survive, man. We didn't know that these things are easily accessible. Mm-hmm. We didn't know ways to ask for help. Nope. And so who do I email back then? Who do I call? Yeah. Because my doctor's not listening. And not Ghostbusters because they are not going to do anything about it. No. Mm. That's a whole other problem. Unless there's a ghost in your body. Suck it out. There might be. (laughs) I mean, let's. We don't know. Um, Eating popcorn. There's Mm. the ghost. Eating popcorn. Puts the ghosts in your belly. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Did you really just tie that Uh together? I did. Your ghost. Thank you. Yep. Oh, my God. Yep, I did. The popcorn. Thank you. I think that's amazing. You are beyond. Um, But yeah, we didn't set ourselves up for success. And we, yes, a part of that is how we grew up. We were both just trying to survive. Yeah. And, you know, you were just trying to survive with Dylan and everything that you were going through. Just being a single mom. Yeah. I was trying to survive just to pay my bills Mm -hmm. and be at a job for more than a few months. Yes. Like, I I mean, honestly, we didn't we didn't have a whole lot going on that was going to help us with our weight. But we did things like this is the point of this is that we did things to ourselves. We did. To cause this weight gain. Correct. And I think it's time to stop lying to ourselves, Mm -hmm. no matter where you're at in your journey. Yep. Whether you're pre-op, post-op, 10 years from now. Yeah. Because like I can say up, I did this to myself. I fucking did this. Yep. And that moment that you take control over it, that's when it all starts to turn around. And when you start to realize like, oh, this is emotional eating. Oh, I have trauma. That's why I do this. Yep. All of these things. Or you were going through trauma that you didn't realize. You didn't realize that that Mm -hmm. was happening Mm -hmm. because like now that we have said it out loud about like what I was going through from 18 to 19 Mm -hmm. into my my early 20s. -hmm. It's fucking ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, I was with my ex and we we know what happened there. So uh, lots of lots of not good things going on. Yeah. And we didn't know how to ask for help. Mm -mm. And I but I do think that it comes it boils down to you need to put the blame where it belongs. Yeah, because once you own it, you mm-hmm. feel better. You like do. Once I finally was like, hey, I've regained. Mm-hmm. And, and now all the things are changing around me mm-hmm. because I'm not scared of it anymore. Yeah, there's no reason to be scared of it. And mm-hmm. I think that's something, that's a movement we need to make more apparent in our community and general the general community of the world. Yeah. Um, that it, you're not, Taking ownership is not blaming yourself. No. Taking ownership is saying, this is what's happened. This is what I did to be an active participant in what has happened. And I'm going to change this. Correct. And I like, you had talked about um, on our episode that just came out um, today. Oh, with Very Connected? Yes. Uh, You had talked about how to make changes. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something else that we did not know that actually contributed to my weight gain. Is I thought in order to change, you had to change everything all at once. Yeah. It's an all or nothing mm-hmm. situation. Mm-hmm. And you had talked very clearly about um, you do one step and you make sure that that step is solid and yep. that you do it without even thinking. Mm-hmm. Then you move on to the next. Correct. And my habit was, OK, no sugar, no mm-hmm. carbs, working out every day, um, no eating out. OK, I'm going to do all of this all at once. And then guess what would happen? First weekend, it would all go to shit. Yep. And then anything that I lost, I gained back plus more. Yeah. And that's diet culture. That is diet culture. That's a yo-yo dieting. Mm -hmm. That's the all or nothing mindset. Like, that part sucks. And yo-yo dieting contributed to a lot of my weight gain. 
Yeah, because it's not good for your pancreas. It's it's not good for your like metabolism, your nothing. your any part of your system. It's, it is not good for it's you. It's not good to be like do 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 do. Yep. Like your body's like freaking out. Mm-hmm. Like, what are you doing, girl? Yep. What's up? Yeah. Why are we moving so like, why are we not moving now? Why are we moving a lot? This mm-hmm. is confusing. And I remember losing weight for we went on a cruise. Mm-hmm. And I remember I was bound to determine I was gonna like myself in a bathing suit. Okay. And so I was working out all the time. It was actually right around the time you had surgery. Okay. And we were going to the gym. Oh, right yes. around from I my, saw yeah. those photos recently. I know. It was kind of cute. Um, and I remember every I was in the gym five days a week. Mm-hmm. I would get up. I would go. I was eating like I thought healthy, but really it was just depriving myself yeah. of everything yeah. and of taste of everything. Like I was just. Now we know there's flavor everywhere. There is. You can just add it. And I didn't know. I thought you had to eat, you know, boiled chicken and vegetables every night to to lose weight. And I mean, that's, it does work, but it's not fun. Well, it's not fun. And why? A lot of the bodybuilders do it still. Well, but that's their prof- like that's kind of like their profession. I, I don't think say, I don't way. think it's healthy. No. By any means. But I think it's more like their perfection. I think that's fair because even actors do that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Can you I mean, all of them probably have jacked up metabolisms at this point. I would hope not just because they have a lot of money to have access. But you never know. You never know. You never know. But yeah, I remember working out for this length of time. Yeah. And I had lost probably, I think, 30 pounds at that point. OK. And we went on the cruise and guess what? All fell apart. Yeah. On the cruise. Yeah, because I was like, oh, yeah, they have a gym on the on the boat. I'm going to go work out in the morning and then I'll go. No, that never happened. Mm -mm. I was eating shit food every single day because I was like, I'm on vacation. I can do what I want. Yep. And then you come back. It never goes back. No, it never comes back. You have to stay with it no matter where you're at, Mm -hmm. because your body doesn't know you're on. We've said this so many times. Your body does not know you're on vacation. Yep. Yep. Like, you know. You got to take care of your body. Yeah. Which I'll is have part a, of self-care, guys. It is. You yeah. have to take care of your system. You have to take care of yourself. And part of that is staying in your routine mm-hmm. as much as you can, even when you're not in your home base. Yeah. Like what I do now when we go on trips and stuff, like I will just have at least like one meal mm-hmm. that I just really want. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. like you just pick something. Yeah. Through the through, through the trip. Yeah. That's and I mean, really, we don't eat enough for it to make a difference. Right. Like. Most of the time when we're on a trip, we do not eat enough. No, I, every time we go on a trip, I lose weight. Yeah. So. But we also run move. ourselves ragged. We move a lot. We do. We move a lot more than we, mm-hmm. than we do when we're home. So yeah. that's like the biggest thing, too, is the movement. I think people forget like how important it how is. How important it is. Yeah. I didn't realize that just going out and walking does so much for your body. It does. And like, mm-hmm. I don't know who told us, but it's that shuffle with your feet when you get older mm-hmm. like when if you see someone oh i can't who the fuck told us this i i don't know okay this well, might I'll, be one of your podcasts because i don't remember this okay so yeah you tell me if you remember this so if you see someone like an older person walking and they aren't they are just shuffling okay to move okay and they're walking probably fast they're shuffling like okay crazy. um that means that they did that they lost too much muscle in their thighs so they're actually not able to pick up their legs anymore. So that's because they're not doing any strength training or doing anything as uh, through their whole life. Wow. So that's a thing that they now know is like, that's why they want you to do leg day. Even with guys. Fucking, do fucking leg day. Do fucking leg day. Why do, why do guys hate leg day? I used to like it. Because they, they want the big arms and the chest and the back and the mouth. I mean, yeah, that's very sexy. They want the all. V. Okay. They want the V in, you know. I mean, but give I'll, me a good beer belly with good arms. I'm all for it. <laughs> I like dad bods. Dad dad bods. I like dad bods. Dad bods are totally fine. I mean, I like. I don't the, want the beer belly. Uh, no, not like beer belly, but just like a little. Oh like, yeah, I, I don't want to feel like. I call that the Uda Buddha belly. Yes, like mm-hmm. that. But mm-hmm. I like to like feel the good arms I, I don't know I'm a I'm a sucker for good arms I'm, like I am too. Jason Momoa's arms mm-hmm. wild yeah wild I'm all for that <laughs> yeah that's why they focus on the arms 
Yeah. They know that women love the armpits. I do, but I don't give a shit. Like, I would rather have, like, a little belly or a little, you know, I don't want to feel like. I don't want to feel like skin and bones. That's for sure. No. Because that's always what I'm afraid of when we get older. Yeah. Is, like, to be looking like your skin and bones. So that's why I'm always, like, squats. I can squat all day. Yes, you can. And Kelly needs to start squatting. I like the the leg machine thing where you push up. Yeah, those are fun. You should do I that. I like those. I don't belong to a gym anymore. Oh, you don't. No. You <laughs> Okay, we should probably tell this, this story a, and wrap it up. This is so, a funny story. Okay, yeah. This is a hilarious story. So we, you know, we have a business, obviously, and we can actually go to the gym on whatever OSLP's dime, right? So that's kind yeah, of Yeah, because deal. we create content. Because we create content there. So what we decided was we both got a membership, mm-hmm. and Kelly got one before I did. It was like a month before, Yep, and it got me going in. Yep. She inspired me. Thank and you. then we're going, going, going. And then I think like a six months later or no, a year later, you got something in the mail. Right. Or like, OK, so let me tell this. You do you tell yeah. the rest of that. OK, story. so we went on a trip to Vegas. Oh, we're going to go that far. OK. Yeah. Yep, yep, so yep. we were on the trip to Vegas at the WSFA mm-hmm. and I accidentally left my business card. Yeah, we're at the Paris at the restaurant. Yep. And I was just like, eh, it's fine. I'll go back later. Well, I never went back later. Right. And so we never thought of it. I wasn't really going to the gym at that point anyways, because, you know, same old, same old. I drop off because I try to change everything all at once. Yep. Um, And so I ended up going on the app, I want to say. Oh, okay. And it was like, hey, you're you're suspended (laughs) because you have six months worth of payments that haven't been made. And I was like, what? And then I realized we canceled my card and that was the card that was attached to the gym. Yes, it was. And I've never gone back. And she's never paid. (laughs) Oops. Sorry. It's so good. I'm really bad at that. What? Paying shit. Paying shit. Or like dealing with shit. Uh, like I'm better at it now because of the ADHD meds. Like yep. I am like, okay, I got to deal with this right now. Um, But for the, I'm really bad at it. <laughs> like I, I mean, it's kind of like the homework thing. Like you're really good at homework and you're really good at dealing with the things that you have to deal with. Yep. Like returning and shit like that. I will literally let it sit in the back of my car. And then I'm like, what is this? I think it's the mom part of me because like I have to return so I can get that money back or like yeah, I have to complete things think. so that way like Dylan can get this and go there and do it's mm-hmm. like yeah yeah I don't Mm-mm. no no you're such a nerd but a nerd. I mean it, it it happened yeah so whatever well, and now you're way aware I think that's also a thing it was like obviously in our teens and 20s we were not aware we were not aware of, of anything of anything. And we were we were not given the knowledge mm-hmm. that we needed to be aware. Yes. Like we had especially with our health. Mm-hmm. Not no fucking clue. Correct. No fucking clue. But I also think that we did things to make us gain weight. And oh, we, and 100%. there's a lot of things. And without that knowledge and without that uh, awareness. Mm-hmm. We just were not equipped to make the decisions to help us be healthy. Yeah. I mean, well, we obviously got it, got to our fuck it point and we were like, we yeah. have to do something about mm-hmm. this. We got to our low point and mm-hmm. got our surgeons and did the damn thing. Mm-hmm. But there was like no real health in between. No. So. And I don't think even then I was on the path. Like, yeah, I lost weight, but I don't think it was until I regained Mm -hmm. that I really like needed to make some changes and become like have an ownership over like my emotional eating and what I was doing every day. Like, I think that was the point where I could Mm -hmm. finally understand like what I needed to do. Yeah, it takes it takes time, man. Mm -hmm. It really does. Yeah. Because like even I like not that I fucked up, but like. I knew what I was doing mm-hmm. to regain. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and I literally kept doing it. I was like, fuck it. And it's interesting because I kept telling myself, it's fine. You know how to get it. This is what I did. I remember distinctly walking past that mirror because mm-hmm. we put up a, I put up a mirror in the hallway. Well, Zach put it up, but I bought it. Yeah. Anyways. So <laughs> we could have put it up. We could have. We, we just chose not to. Exactly. So 
literally I saw myself and I was like, I know how to get this off. I'm just going to fucking eat this. I don't care. And that, and that would repeat that. Mm. I would just keep telling myself, oh, you, you'll, you'll be able to fix it. Don't worry. You, you have all the resources. You want to know what mine was? And oh, one, one last oh, okay. part of that. Okay. I've also learned about my body is I had this part of my body on my stomach where if I, if it pooches out is what I call it, like a little, okay. little blow, balloon out. If it does that, then I need to lose weight. Like, cause that's what my body used to do. Mm-hmm. Guess what? My body is gaining in different spots. Mm. It's not gaining in that area anymore. So you were able to overlook it. Uh huh. Cause Easier. you know where it's gaining? Where? My fucking back. Literally, it's those back ones. That's it's I fucking I realize it. So it's back here, mm-hmm. a little bit on my arms and a little bit on my thighs. But now it's not doing my front stomach at all. It's heading on to the back. So uh, that's also why I fucked. I got fucked because I damn. wasn't realizing. I wasn't looking. I was just looking at this one area. Mm-hmm. Sucks. But you also were telling yourself a lie. Oh yeah. I'm going to do this day. because I know how to get this off. Mm-hmm. Yep. So my little saying that I used to tell myself before I when while I was regaining is I don't eat enough to have it make a difference. Mm, OK, yeah. But when you start eating foods, so I used to only eat like when I would have dinner, it would be like the meat. Right. Basically. Yeah. Right. Well, when I started dating Zach, he would make. All these other things. He makes a He'd lot like, of sides. Oh, try this. Try this. Try that. Yeah. And so I would be eating for a good solid two hours. Yeah. Little because bites I would this, little bites. Not. And so in my head, I was like, oh, I don't need enough for it to make a difference. Yep. Or I'm just having a steak. Mm-hmm. But we're not talking about the steak. the steak. We're talking about all the other things you're eating yep. or the nutty bars that you're eating at night. Mm-hmm. Or but I would always say, like, I don't eat enough for it to make a difference. You know what? I've used that, too. It does make a difference. It does make a difference. In some ways, it doesn't. So I feel like if we're on vacation and we're taking a meal or you're celebrating things and you want to have one meal, that's that's not going to make a huge difference. That's that's different. But if you're telling yourself every day, Mm -hmm. oh, I don't eat enough. It's not going to make a difference. I I will. I would count the beginning of the day and be like, oh, I did really well. So I'm totally fine. And I would do really well Mm -hmm. when that nightfall hits. Mm-hmm. Something about that nightfall. I don't know what it is about night eating. It's fucking stupid. Like, it's so frustrating. Because we were on the call with Nick and I was literally like, it's not fixing the food hunger. And he's like, that's the addiction part. And I'm like, no, so yep. annoying. I have to talk myself down. Yep. I literally am doing the right things. And then at nighttime, I'm like, oh, you can have a little bit mm-hmm. of this. You can have that. And then all of a sudden, and it's funny because I'll do the you know, where you want the one thing and then you do all these other things. Yeah. And I literally did that way too many times because I was overeating Mm -hmm. when I could have just had the one thing. Mm -hmm. And so it was just like a fucking mind fuck. I think that's one of the biggest things that I've learned is like, if you want something, just have it. Yeah. Like I want my butter toffee cashews. Mm -hmm. That is what I eat at night. Like before I go to bed every single night. Okay. I'm not going to go out and have a a cheese stick, a meat stick, Mm -hmm. some snap peas, some whatever. I'm going to just eat my cashews because that's what I truly want. And if I know that if I go to the kitchen and have a cheese stick, a meat stick, all of these things, I'm still going to want my cashews Mm -hmm. and I'm still going to eat them. So I ate all of these other calories when I could have just had what I really wanted. Yep. And wouldn't have. Gain, like gained anything. Yeah. I think that's one of the biggest realizations I made mm-hmm. was don't just have it yeah. because it's healthy. Right. Because it's not feeding that addictive brain part. It's no. Not, it's not helping because what Katie says that she does, and I'm going to probably implement this too because Katie's fucking smart. She is smart. She buys the skinny ice cream sandwiches. Yeah. And she has one a night. Yep. And I was like, what? Really? And she's like, no, it's like 90 calories. Yeah. And I was like, that would solve so much of my problem because I want something chocolatey and sweet and sweet at night. And if I just had a skinny one in my head, I'll be like, oh, I finished the whole thing. Yeah, that's a lot. Like, I already know that trick that works. Yeah. It's just I just need it to be something that's still chocolate. I like Mm -hmm. like those whims. 
I want more. So good. I want more whims than the nougat. Yeah, I want. I could have that next to my my bedside at all. Yeah, or those uh, Oreo cookies that we had. I still have a pack. I think I still have a pack. Or no, I gave them all to you guys, didn't I? I don't know. I think I I know that I scarfed one down when I got home. It's like those taste like Oreos. They do, and they actually fall apart easier than Oreos. Yeah, they're more crumbly, and I like it. I like it. Yeah, mm-hmm. we have yeah. to get some of those. So, so we have found some alternatives. Yeah, and I think that we're in like this new wave where like a lot of people are trying to get healthy. Uh huh. So we're seeing way better products coming out, which yeah, I'm very excited about. For sure. So guys, tune in to our Thursday night live. Yes, me and Kelly will be cooking, and. We'll be trying new stuff. So basically what we're saying is you can still cook a good meal full of protein. Yep. And have a dessert. And we're trying to show you how that's possible without depriving yourself. Exactly. You don't have to deprive yourself of the things you like. No. Like I love cheesy chicken, cheesy, whatever. I love cheese. Anything right? with cheese where me and her are good. Cheese and tortillas. I'm good. Yep. Um, and we even made the cheeseburger hot pockets, that was delicious. which were so good, mm-hmm. so easy to make. Yep. Um, and so we're just trying to show you like there are alternatives. You don't have to eat boiled chicken and veggies every night. No, you don't. You can have a Italian Alfredo pizza roll. Right. And then you can still hit all your markers. Yes. And have dessert. Yeah. Because it's not. It, it, I, I think we need to get rid of the thought that we need to deprive ourselves in order to be healthy. I don't think that's true anymore. No, we just need to change the frame of how we eat and what we eat. Yeah. So yeah. what Mel was saying, like tune in Thursday nights mm-hmm. on TikTok and IG. The recipe will be only on IG, though, because we can't save the lives on TikTok. Um, and the caption area Way is not. It, yeah, it's not. I have enough. an idea for you after this. Though, I actually that. have an idea also that I've been kind of playing with, okay. um, but it is on IG and uh, we are also going to be doing reviews of products. So if you guys have products that you would like us to try on uh, on live, please send it. Yeah, because we will cook it. We will try it live. Yep. We even made dough like. Yeah, we will literally well, you do and Katie it. did. Yeah. Yeah, that dough was rough, but we did Mel it. Mel did not have a good time with that dough. Mm-mm. I think next time I'll be on it. Okay. Okay. You do the dough. I do better. I'm too scared of dough. <laughs> I don't I'm... know where it comes from, but I'm too scared of it. So it's kind of wild. But yeah, yeah. so guys, we're going to wrap this on up. So go yes. to our website. You get to find all the things. There's mm-hmm. the newsletter. There's an ebook that comes mm-hmm. with it. You can become a patron. You can buy your merch there. Mm-hmm. It's an amazing place to go. Yep. And don't forget to uh, subscribe and ring the little bell on t- on YouTube. I almost said TikTok. YouTube. Follow us on TikTok. All the social medias. You know we're there. And uh, yeah, can't wait for the next episode. Mm-hmm. We love you guys. And we will see you next, next time. time. Bye. Bye.